It's your boy Tony back at it again with a video. So, y'all, what is up? Uh, real quick announcement about 15% of the people that watch the videos are subscribed. If you like the content, if you leave a comment, please subscribe. It really goes a long way to help a black business out and grow the channel. Thank you. Let's get into it. See you. So for this video, let's talk about Brother Floyd. Let's talk about George Floyd, but not necessarily the trial or Derek Chauvin. Let's talk about the policing uh, after him and what the, the law currently in Congress says, the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act and what it holds. There is a lot to this law. And I spent about a good portion of the day reading through a lot of it. And honestly, if I tell you every single piece of it, it's going to be an hour long video. So instead, I'm gonna just summarize the core parts of it, the really good things a part of it. But I also wanna emphasize that a lot of the stuff in the, I guess, literature of this law is as an incentivization. It is not a, a hard ban. For example, I'll talk about chokeholds later. Uh, the, the federal government would be incentivizing um, the banning of chokeholds as opposed to flat out banning it so that's just you know i guess a pre a preface to a lot of the stuff that i'm going to talk about in this video but with that being said let's get started so first and foremost one of the big things it does is it lowers the standard that we need to um arrest and persecute cops under law so right now cops have general invulnerability when it comes to law almost but with the passing of the, the bill, it would then lower the necessary standards from willful, which is just a legal term, I'm not entirely sure what it means, to uh, knowing or reckless. Meaning, for example, let's say the Dante Wright case, right? Let's say that the, the, the woman officer in that uh, scenario, she then has the complete ability to persecute it under the law because even though she may not have known or whatever or it wasn't willful it was still reckless because she recklessly used her gun rather than her taser so for example that is where it applies now moving forward there's also the getting rid of qualified immunity it oh, let me not say get rid of first and foremost it puts a big restriction on qualified immunity. It puts a big, I guess, scale it back just a little bit. Right now, if you don't know what it is, qualified immunity is basically what the police use so that they are kind of given blanket protection from private civil litigation. Meaning, let's say you have an altercation with a police officer and that police officer, while on the job specifically, breaks your arm you cannot then sue that police officer whether you are guilty or innocent because qualified immunity. However, if we ban qualified immunity, which this bill does not totally outright ban it, I wanna be clear on that. It sets limitations to it though. But uh, under this, should that cop that broke your arm, you would then be, have the ability to, to sue that cop for a private, in a private civil case for restitution that way. This bill would also ban a few things, or better said, incentivize the banning of a few things. For example, chokeholds, incentivize ban, carotid holds, incentivize ban, uh, no knock warrants, incentivize ban. Well, actually, I think that one may be just a federal thing. No, and all actually, those three things are for federal officers. Those three things all apply: chokeholds, carotid bans, and no knocks. However, for state and local um, officers and departments it's an incentivize. Now, moving forward, this bill would also create a national registry for police in terms of recording all of the data that uh, goes along with policing. Uh, it also would cover each police officer. It would have the history of their complaints. It would have the history of their um, misconducts, a uh, history of basically any and everything that happens to a singular officer. And that would be a national registry because right now, if an officer gets fired from one agency, I'm sorry, department for whatever, they can just go to another department. The National Registry kind of seeks to limit that. It does not ban that kind of practice outright because for example, or if you guys remember about a while ago, here in Florida where I live, uh, there was a police department that literally welcomed, made a, a, a national announcement welcoming any police officers 
that were fired from their department based on misconduct. It, I, I can't remember which department did it, but it was this big thing. And we, I'm, I live in Florida. I'm sorry. Florida man is here. He's in every industry. And that national registry, as well as just in general, it would also force the police departments uh, and sheriff departments uh, to submit records and data that they, they currently should be logging, but don't necessarily have to log, as well as don't necessarily have to release. For example, use of force data, for example, search data, for example, traffic stop data, um, things like that. It then forces those departments to track that data and release that data. Each police department slash sheriff department would also, I'm sorry, sheriff office would also have to uh, seek accreditation from the DOJ, the Department of Justice. Uh, essentially what this means is they would have to reach certain standards uh, in terms of training, in terms of uh, post-academy training, in terms of implicit bias tests, uh, profiling tests, and things like that, of that nature essentially, to receive the federal funding. They have to be accredited to get that federal funding. That's kind of what, I guess, the effort is at reform in terms of making policing better uh, as, as Congress sees it, better said. Um, and then another big part of the bill is making the standard for a police officer who sees another police officer doing something incorrect, stopping that, which is not the standard now, believe it or not. I know, I know, shocking, thin blue line. Uh, I'm sorry, thin blue wall, but right now, one of the goals is to make that a standard. And I guess it kind of goes toward that good cop, bad cop mentality, you know? They're like, oh, it's not, it's just some bad apples. Yeah, well, bad apples spoil the bunch. So unless we got somebody picking them out, then I don't know what you want us to do. So that's kind of what that is aiming to do, basically, is to, to have that good cop actually be incentivized to be a good cop, to break down that blue wall. Um, but essentially those are like the main things in the bill. Uh, keep in mind, a lot of this is funding based in terms of incentivizing funding. It does not necessarily an outright ban a lot of the stuff that we want banned. For example, we want chokeholds banned outright, no questions asked. We want carotids banned. We want no knock warrants banned. We want qualified immunity banned. We don't want any kind of discussion on it being incentivized or anything like that. We want it gone because that's just, that's what would make policing better. Um, if you could even make policing better right now, the current state of affairs does not tell me we can, but that takes people who are willing to act. So anyways, that is the video guys. Thank you for watching. Uh, appreciate you. We're out.